What's going on, YouTubers? Your boy, Deluxe Man, and welcome to my Q&A corner, number two. Every Wednesday, I will be answering your questions given to me on Ask FM, and I will do it in a 10 to 15 minute time span. If you have a question you want me to answer, please leave it on my Ask FM page. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it with the first question. What do you think about Cody Rhodes' new gimmick as Stardust? And do you think this could give him a big push? Yes, I do think so. Why? Because of the talent itself. I've been a big advocate of Cody Rhodes since he first came to the WWE. And seeing all the ridiculous gimmicks he's already gotten with the dashing gimmick, the pretty boy gimmick, the grotesque gimmick with a mask, the love stash gimmick, um, the stuff with legacy, I think Cody Rhodes is the type of person that can be given anything and make it work to his advantage. And I like what he's doing too. I like the fact that he's changed his style along with his looks. Style as in wrestling ability. I like that. Well, not wrestling ability. Wrestling style inside the ring. And I see this leading to some interesting things with him and Goldust. Um, I like the tag team, by the way. I think it's more cohesive this way. But... I can see this eventually leading into a storyline that sees Cody Rose probably take it too far, maybe get a little bit more deranged than Goldust wants him to, then break off from Goldust and then have a match at SummerSlam or sometime down the line. Whatever the case, I am very, very interested in seeing what they do or what Cody Rose does with this new gimmick. And I do believe it's going to get him to the main event scene somehow, some way. We'll have to see. How and when did you get into wrestling? My first wrestling match was in 1998. I believe I answered this many times before, but I don't mind answering it again. Um, first match I've ever seen was Shawn Michaels versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, WrestleMania 14. I was brought into the wrestling business because I was a big fan of Mike Tyson. So you guys can thank Mike Tyson for making me um, a wrestling fan. Although wrestling has been in my family for a very long time, my dad was a very big fan of Bruno San Martino, big Hulk Hogan fan, Randy Savage fan. And as a kid, I remember watching some Hulk Hogan matches when he was in WCW. So I will say Hulk Hogan was the very first wrestler I knew about. But I didn't become a regular wrestling fan like that watches every single week until 1998, WrestleMania 14, after I saw Austin beat Shawn Michaels. So the very beginning of his feud with Vince McMahon was when I became a wrestling fan. Ain't that cool? But thanks for that question. Um, at Money in the Bank, do you see Cesaro winning the championships? I would like for him to win the championships, but I'm not going to lie. His chances are slim, you know, with... Cena, Orton, and all these other top quality superstars, and actually I won't say top quality, top tier superstars in the match. Former world champions and people like Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. Um, Cesaro is kind of on the bottom of the pole when I think about it, in terms of who has the most likely chance of winning. So, hey, that's not a bad thing. That just means that people expect him to win the match the least. How about that? I want Cesaro to be champion one day. Do I think he's going to win the championship at Money in the Bank? Not really, but if he does, I will be a very happy camper. It would be a very shocking moment. A great shocking moment, by the way, that fans will remember. So thanks for that question. Do you think Alicia Fox can be a two-time Divas champion? Sure. I think this is the most interesting diva, diva run that Alicia Fox has had since she got in the company. And I'm not going to lie. It's no secret that I have not always been a fan of Alicia Fox. As a matter of fact, she used to annoy the hell out of me. Very, very much. Oh my god. She was good as a wrestler. I never really thought she was a bad wrestler. I felt she was sloppy at times, but... What ultimately drew me away from Alicia Fox was her personality. She just annoyed me on the microphones. Like, ah, go away. But nowadays, this new crazy gimmick that she has, I don't know, I call it the uh, Foxy Vixen. That's what I called it on my Raw review like a month ago when she first debuted it. But the Foxy Vixen gimmick, I really enjoy. And I love seeing her lose her 
lose her cool and just go crazy after every single match. Whether she wins or loses, fans look forward to what she does after the match. And that's always good. You always need that persona that can carry a segment, that can carry whatever she does in some type of fashion in her own way. So, yeah, cool to Alicia Fox. And if she becomes Diva Champion again, I would not be mad at that. What do you think about the Hollywood Rock gimmick? in 2003 one of my personal favorite heel gimmicks um and the thing about that is when everybody was hating on the rock i didn't really hate the rock around the time maybe because the rock is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time maybe that's because i didn't hate him as much but regardless even when he was the heel i found him so entertaining that i really didn't see him as a heel character there wasn't a point during his run that i thought man i hate the rock i want to see him get his butt kicked nope Still like The Rock. I mean, he was a douchebag, granted, and that Sacramento, leaving Sacramento, Sacramento. I love, love, love that um, concert. It was so, so awesome. I can watch it every single uh, day over and over and over again and never get tired of it. One of the best seal gimmicks. And as a matter of fact, I would like to see more of it. I would have liked to have seen him do it more. But, of course... After he left, he came back as The Rock, and I think WWE realized that, you know what, The Rock is too likable to really carry a heel gimmick, so, understandable. But yeah, I loved it. Um, worst pay-per-view match of 2014 so far. And I'm gonna assume you mean in WWE. Whew, let me see. The match between John Cena and Randy Orton at the Royal Rumble, that was pretty bad. But there were worse matches. Taker and Lesnar was pretty bad. <laughs> that was a bad match. Uh, let me see. I don't know. It's hard. Might have to go with... I might have to go with Cena and Orton. I just really hated that match. <laughs> oh, man. I can't think of any other matches that were, like, absolutely terrible. Where, like, one star level bad. In WWE. Now, if you go to TNA and ROH, I might find one. Definitely, but... Uh... I guess Cena and Norton from the Royal Rumble. <laughs> that match was... Despite the fact that the crowd just tore it to shreds, I thought Cena and Norton were just completely off in that match. It didn't gel. It was boring. It was kind of... Not really good at all. Especially for main event players like them, there is no excuse for that match to be that bad. Even when they are, you know, not having the best days, as a main eventer, you're supposed to go out there and at least put on a solid match because you're the top of the company. There should be no excuse why you should have bad matches. Just like it's no excuse for Brock Lesnar and Goldberg to have a terrible match at WrestleMania. That match deserves to be called one of the worst matches in WrestleMania history because it shouldn't have been. Just like Cena versus Orton should not have been that bad of a match, in my personal opinion. So there you go. Do you think Cena will win the title at Money in the Bank? Now, he didn't ask me, do I think Cena can win? He asked, do I think he will win? There's a high chance, like an 80% chance that he will, and that bothers me. <laughs> I don't want him to win the championship again, because that means he's going to be a 15-time champion, then he's going to be behind Ric Flair by one championship run. Ric Flair is 16-time, and Cena will be 15-time if he wins it. At Money in the Bank, so hopefully, no, he will. He won't win it, but he probably will. Damn it! Do you see Sami Zayn as world champion? If you do, do you think that his reign would be as uh, Jeff Hardy's like for only one pay per view? Hmm. I hope he's not a transitional champion, and I guess that's what you're asking me. Do I think Sami Zayn will be a transitional world champion if he becomes world champion? First off, yes, I do see Sami Zayn. I do see Sami Zayn being a world champion in the near future. That's not saying he will be, but I can see it happening in the near future. Maybe in the next three, four years, maybe so. Um, do I think he'll be a transitional champion? Knowing the WWE, he most likely will, but I hope he isn't. <laughs> I really don't. If you're going to make someone like Sami Zayn a champion, a world champion, let him at least hold it for three months, three, four months, like Eddie Guerrero. A solid championship reign. Because to me, someone like Sami Zayn, who's a great wrestler, who can actually get it done inside the ring, 
needs to be able to prove himself as a champion and not be considered a transitional one. And I hate that. I hate when WWE makes great talent like Sami Zayn, Daniel Bryan, uh, you know, CM Punk and Edge and all these other ones transitional champions and not let them have a good run when they're good talents. So, yeah, I can see it happening. Um, let's hope it's not the transitional Jeff Hardy reign that you um, brought up here. Let me see. Uh, best Daniel Bryan match. Ooh. Ooh. I'm assuming in WWE, right? It's a tie between uh, Cena versus Bryan, the WrestleMania match at WrestleMania 30, his match against Triple H, and his match against CM Punk. I can't decide. <laughs> um, CM Punk at... Uh, 2012, the one pay-per-view after he fought, the, the very first match that him and CM Punk had on pay-per-view, that one to me is their best match yet. I think I'm going to assume that was over the limit. I'm not too sure. You'll have to remind me of um, which pay-per-view that was, but it was the very first match him and CM Punk had on pay-per-view. That to me was one of his best matches, but I can't decide which one was the best one. If I had to go by moment, like which, which one gave him the biggest moment, WrestleMania 30, absolutely. Absolutely, um, but in terms of quality, it's really hard to decide. <laughs> Don't ever ask people questions like that. And I, I'm not trying to be offensive, but it's like, what's Ric Flair's best match? What's uh, Shawn Michaels' best match? I don't know. <laughs> They've had so many great matches. It's hard to decide. Um, and I'm not saying it to be offensive or anything. It's just that's not fair. So many questions. So many not questions. So many. So many options to choose from. Ah, so, I'm going to assume those four. Um, two more, and then I'll have to cut it off. Let me see. Where does Bray Wyatt, Br Bray Wyatt, where does Bray Wyatt rank on top promo cutters of all time? Um, has he made my top ten? He's very high. Has he made the top ten? Uh, uh, I don't know. You got Piper, you got Rock, you got, you know, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, you got... You know, Bobby Heaney got managers. I don't think he would actually make the top ten. Of course, Austin. The, the list is too big. Paul Heyman, jeez. The list is way too big, guys. I don't think I can put him in the top ten. But I'll put him in my top 20. How about that? Top 20 talkers, definitely. Not top ten. Not yet. He's only 26. Right? I'm going to go with 26. He might be 28 or 27. But 26. He's very young. He has so many years left in him. So we'll have to see what he does in this next decade. And then maybe, down the line, I might say he's one of my top favorite. Final question. Apparently, the WWE has announced that there's going to be a second Money in the Bank match. And I got like five questions of people asking me, Delex Man, um, how you feel about it? And someone actually asked me, um, how do I feel about um, a certain list that might actually be made? First off, I'm happy that we're getting a second Money in the Bank match for the briefcase. I thought one of the downfalls of having the World Championship ladder match was that we're not going to get a Money in the Bank match. And that's going to exclude all these younger t uh, talent from making a name for themselves. So the fact that we're actually getting it makes me happy. And I can't wait for it. I actually think that match might be better than the main event match. <laughs> it might. And that's probably not going to make the WWE happy, but that's how it's going to be. Now... Someone actually gave me a question that told me some contestants that might be, you know, you know good choices for this match. Um, and here's his list. He said, how do I feel about this Money in the Bank match? Dolph Ziggler, Bob News Barrett, Rob Van Dam, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Cody Rhodes. Hmm. Let me think about it. Hell yes. That's awesome. I love that list. Um, he has Roman Reigns on here, but I didn't mention him on purpose because he's in the World Championship match. But that sounds awesome. Maybe replace Roman Reigns with Rusev, and yeah, there you go. Now it's a great Money in the Bank match. I would love to have seen, have seen, I would love to see that match, actually. And if that is the Money in the Bank match that happened at, you know, Money in the Bank, that would probably steal the show. Definitely. Uh, so, good list, bro. I mean... That would definitely sell out money in the bank as it is. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is going to be the Q&A for this week. Thank you once again to all who sent me your questions. If I didn't get to you, don't take it seriously, but maybe next time. I'll see you guys next week for my weekly Q&As, and don't forget to leave all your Q&As on my Ask FM page. So 
Catch you guys later. This is your boy, Deluxe Man signing off. Peace.